public library there in San Francisco. And with that said, I wanna give you a little background about Reference Solutions. We're out of Omaha, Nebraska. We started in business in 1972, pretty much at that point in time as a list marketing company. Businesses would call us and they'd, they'd order a list of, of other businesses information and we would mail that to them and go about our day in and day out operations. Of course, with technology and in the advent of the internet, we're able to do so much more online, including making reference solutions available through your library, either in the library or remotely when you're at home or office or, or perhaps enjoying some, some nice location in the city. You can get access to reference solutions 24 seven. And in terms of our business model, so we do compile business data here in Omaha. We have just over 16 million verified businesses. We also have records for what we refer to as unverified businesses. Those are records that well may have been verified at one point in time. And then when we went to do our annual phone call, we were unable to reach them. We don't stop at just one attempt though, as you can imagine, it's in our business's best interest to try and keep records verified. So we will continue calling those businesses throughout the course of two years. We'll make a dozen attempts different time of day, different day of week, et cetera. And we're calling on Saturdays as well, by the way. We will try and reach those businesses to keep them in that verified status. If we don't find anything about them having closed or that they've gone out of business, we will move it from that verified status into the unverified. So if you do business with other businesses, I will certainly show you how you can use that kind of insight in order to be able to pull up that ideal list of potential customers that you may want to do business with. We also have consumer information, and I'll get into that a little bit more here. I do like to point out that we offer webinars. So if, if you have a colleague or, or a friend that wasn't able to attend today's presentation, you could certainly point them to those webinars that we offer on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We also have some information here under the Learning Center that you may want to know about, and it's located under our training and material here. So let me go ahead and open that up. And on this right-hand column, we have this database overviews. We have one for each of our modules, of which there are 10. We have one that's inclusive of all the business modules, one that's inclusive of all the consumer and then all inclusive. We also offer you a data dictionary for the business and consumer information. So feel free to open up any of these that you may want to take a look at. It, they will literally walk you step-by-step step how to do a search, use certain tools that are available in the database, et cetera. So know that that's always available and you can always feel free. You can certainly reach out to the library, but if you'd like to contact us, we have our information here in several spots that you could reach out to us as well. Myself or any of my colleagues would be able to assist you with any kind of search in our database. I do like to also point out we have an app. So if you're an app user, you would maybe appreciate that. You could certainly download the app. There are two modules currently available in that app. That would be the US Business and the US Consumer Lifestyles. Once you go to uh, use that app, it'll ask you to put in your zip code, at which point in time it will do a 25 mile radius around that zip code. So it's possible you could see multiple libraries listed there. You would simply click on the San Francisco Public Library, enter in your library card number, and you'd have access. 
then we also make available the ability for you to create your own personal account. So once you've registered, you can log in and you can virtually save anything from any of these modules except for the jobs and internships. This one you can email results, but you can't save them. The others you can all save them and come back to them at whatever point in time is important for you. So with that said, our business data, we're updating that 52 times a year. Once a week, we're pushing out whatever verification information we've gained during that week. We're pushing that out Thursday into Friday morning. So I mention that because if you've saved a search, perhaps you have created that personal account and you want to save some business records. Let's imagine for a moment that when you saved that search, there were 200 records that you retained. What we do is we actually save the steps that you used to build that search. And then we'll reproduce that whenever on demand, whenever you wanna come back into it. With that in mind, note that if you came back to it, let's say two months later, there are eight updates that have occurred in that two months time. So it's possible you could see 200 and four records now presented to you because we've added some additional businesses to that particular category uh, based on how you saved that. Or conversely, the other way, maybe we've, we've withdrawn some of those, those verified records. We learned that maybe a couple of those businesses have closed or we move them from that verified status into that unverified status. So know that it is dynamic. It may change the longer you allow that to kind of sit there and, and don't go in and update that. But you can, there's no limit to the number of, of saved searches that you can do. So you could save a search and call it you know, whatever, whatever you want to entitle it and come back to that at whatever time is important to you. Could be a, a year from now, right? So this is 52 times a year that it's being updated. Whereas our U.S. historical business information, again, since we're com compiling all this information, we have control of this historical standpoint. We're saving that information annually. So at the beginning of every new calendar year, we're pushing out that previous year's information and adding that. So this is technically once a year. Our Canadian information is once a month. Jobs and internships, we get access to this information through indeed.com and it's being updated daily. Our US new businesses, those are filings for businesses that have sent that information through to the Secretary of State's office. We're capturing that information weekly and making that available. Typically, we can get these new business filings verified within 30 to 60 days. We'll then create an entire record and put it in the US business database but it will be archived in here for one year from date of when we first received that. So I just didn't want you to, to think that once it's been verified, you could never go back and look at the, that particular business at its, at, at its onset within this last year. So once a week on that, the US healthcare, the consumer lifestyles and the Canadian white pages, those are all updated monthly. And then last but not least would be our new movers, new homeowners. We're getting this information through our license agreement with the United States Postal Services National Change of Address. We're updating this universe weekly. So if your business requires you to work with consumers, you may definitely want to take a look at this universe because these could be people not necessarily that have just moved across town or across the bay, but they've moved perhaps from quite a distance away. You're able to 
identify those parameters that make most sense for you, and then be able to look at those people's records as it relates to your business. Perhaps you're going to do uh, a mailing to those to those folks to let them know about your business, perhaps down the street or within that zip code, however you want to frame that. So I'll cover both the US business database, the consumer lifestyles, and if there's time, we can certainly look at the new movers, new homeowners. Be sure and let, uh, let us know if you have any questions as we're going through this. I'd rather answer questions as we're going versus backing up to something, but we can handle it or manage it either way. So whenever I come into a, a database module, as I've done with the US business database here, I'm always gonna to come to this quick search page. Great for finding perhaps one company. Maybe there's a company that uh, you wanna learn some information about. Maybe it's a newer business, maybe it's an old existing business, but you could look up one company by name in whatever city and, and state you would like to, to do that in. You could also look for an executive. Maybe you knew of an executive that was with a company and you've learned that they closed or that that, that particular uh, executive has left that company. You could try and find that executive where they've gotten off to. Hopefully, again, you can, you can at least uh, give them uh, a city and state that they might be in. I can even do a reverse phone number lookup. There is one particular tool that I would like to show you. And so I'll just look, we'll just look at San Francisco here and add that, of course, California. The tool I'm going to show you, and whenever I do this from the quick search page, it's only going to allow me to see those verified records. Once I go to advanced search, then I could start looking at other types of records. But this will only produce those verified records. So across San Francisco, there are 71,000 plus businesses that we have verified. The tool I wanna to show you is this charts tool. It can be used in a variety of, of ways. What it will do in this case is it will break down all of those businesses across the city by the type of industry that they're in. That's done with this SIC code. If you're not familiar with that, that's the standard industrial classification code. Here's my top seven, physicians and surgeons, as often is the case, generally populate this top spot simply because they're all 1099 guys and gals. So they're often at this top spot. In this case, it's followed by restaurants, attorneys, dentists, real estate, nurse practitioners. And notice in the seventh position, automated teller machines. So we do have records for those as well as red box kiosks. So, I mentioned that because in some cases, people don't want those records, right? I will show you, show you how you can omit anything if you would like, including these automated teller machines. I don't stop at the top seven though. I give you a full report. Notice it's 139 pages in length. It gives you that primary SIC code there under, that description for that SIC code, and then the number of records. So if you wanted to, let's say that you had a product that you wanted to be able to sell to beauty salons. You could get to this number of 784 by simply selecting it. And then it will hyperlink right to that group of records and you can go about doing what you need to do with that information. Maybe you're going to save that search, right? Up to you. I can always get back. Let me go back and show you some of the other filters that I can use with the charts. Of course, this is giving me each location. Notice I could switch it up to the zip code that they're in the sales volumes that those businesses are producing, even the number of employees. Let me switch it up to that. So since we're looking at the entire San Francisco area, one to four is that largest universe at over 60%, followed by five to nine, 10 to 19, you get the idea. 
So I have that ability as well. And of course I could switch that up to sales volumes if I like. I can also make this a print off or make it part of a PowerPoint presentation. Granted, I'm looking at all businesses across your community. You could be looking at, let's say two or three types of businesses that you might do business with. So let's go back. I'm gonna revise this search. We got to all of that information by putting by simply putting in that city state. I'm gonna to go to advanced search. And by the way, additional filters goes to the same place, advanced search. It opens up this new window. Now this left-hand column is where I begin making my filter choices that I wanna to use to then drive in the types of records that might ultimately be important to me. I do like to point out the company name option here versus what we saw under quick search where you can look at one company. This would allow you to look at multiple by name. So if IBM were one of those, I could add that to my list. If Delta were another one of those, I could add that to my list. I can add as many businesses by name that are important to me and then simply select whatever geography I need to use. Otherwise, we will always give you the name of the company. We will always give you this executive information where we can get it. In those circumstances where perhaps for your business needs, you need to speak to other owners of businesses. You could use this executive title as one of your filters and just drive in those business records with an owner that's present. Otherwise, we'll give you everybody that we have at that particular business by their title, name and title. Maybe you would accept a manager if in fact there weren't an owner present. You could do it that way as well. You may get both, but you'll for sure get one or the other. So feel free to use that executive information. Keyword is generally the way people search the database because they don't know the SIC codes or these NAICS codes. That's the North American Industrial Classification System Code. It technically has replaced the SIC codes, at least in terms of Uncle Sam's opinion. We've kept the SIC codes alive and we've made them even more granular than what they ever were when used by the US government. So with okay. that said, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, may I interrupt? You bet. Since you're speaking about SIC codes, we have a question about those uh, from someone. The Perfect. Question, does the SIC code break down, break down construction contractors into specific types of contractors, such as water well drillers, for example? Oh, absolutely. So let's do this. I'm going to, I'll come back to this keyword search because I'll use this for an example later. Let's go to that construction. So when I go into the major industry group, this is just the SIC codes, has nothing to do with the NAICS codes. When Uncle Sam was using these codes, they always began with a two digit number. Here's the definition for everything under construction as it relates to general contractors would be under 15, heavy construction, except for those that are doing buildings, would be under 16 and then of course, uh, special trades. So what you would have to do is you would have to look in those to see perhaps where that ideal fit would be. What type of construction was that again? Water well drillers. Water well drillers? Yes. Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna peek under here. Maybe I'll go under here. Oh, water, oh, let's see if I get any drillers in here, you get the idea. You would have to go through this list to see if in fact you're able to find that ideal water line installation, water towers. I don't see it under there. 
I'm going to go back. I'm going to close that back up. And I don't like that heavy, but maybe let's go under that real quick. Ooh, drainage contractors, water pollution, water works. So you can see how you would go through this list. And I'm not seeing it there. And it could well be, I would find that under a contractor. Let's go, I'll close this one entirely and I'll stick with the general contractor. Operation builders, industrial, non-industrial, what's that? Okay, probably not this one. But you get the idea. You would need to spend some time in here, or if you wanted to, we could do it this way as well. Let's use that as a keyword search. Water, well, well uh, again, that was water, what? Water well drillers. Let's see. I'm gonna see what the system comes up with. And it might be all, see if we can get an exact match. So the system's going out there, water well locating, water well drilling and service, there it is. So that fell under that 17. I was close when I was looking for that. And then it's just a matter of, of selecting that geography that you need in order to be able to find that. So you can always do that keyword search too and see if in fact you aren't able to get close. If it didn't come up with my expected definition, I might need to change this up a little bit in order to try and think of a new way in which to phrase that. But we were fortunate in that we were able to get to that here. So no, you can do that with the keyword or that major industry group. That's 17, I'm gonna look at that 1781. I just, for the heck of it, wanna see, that would have fallen under, Under the, the special trade contractors, 1781, there it is. I just went right past it, probably. It's my vision issues. I do need to go get new glasses. So there it is. Uh, geography kind of speaks for itself. I will show you this map-based search tool. Phone speaks for itself. Business size, so number of employees. This is one of those questions that we're asking when we make our verification uh, phone calls to those businesses. How many employees do you have? About 72% of the businesses give us an exact number. Those that don't, we look at their peers in that area based on that SIC code that they're under, and then we apply a range. So if you see an exact number, you know we got that in our phone call. You see a range, we applied that because they did not respond to that question. And we learned a long time ago, you don't ask a private company how much money they're making and not have that phone call perhaps uh, end rather abruptly. So we actually have a team that puts together an algorithm that then produces this sales number. They're using information like the number of employees, that line or line of business that they might be in, the uh, how long they've been in business, where they're physically in business at, because there are variables that we have to account for there. Everything from power and lights to, to taxes, to, to cost to uh, own or operate a business in a particular area. So we take that all into account when we're producing that sales number. If it's a publicly traded company, we're capturing that sales information from their 10K report. So we'll always tell you if it's public or private. I also like to mention home-based businesses. We have those. So if that's, the, if that's a type of business that you would want to do business with, you could certainly look maybe in a particular zip code and perhaps uh, get some of those records, but if you only wanted to see home-based businesses, no, not headquarters, home-based, I could choose to do that or exclude them. 
So no, you could do that either way. And we'll always give you this financial data where we have that. I do like to point out years in the database. If you're looking for newer businesses, perhaps in your community, you could select this years in the database versus year established. And you could tell the system to show you the last couple of years worth of those businesses that have opened up. Maybe they need to be certain types of business. You can do it that way as well. You get to be the driver here. Conversely, maybe you'd like to find some businesses that have been around through the test of time. So if 12 years were your high water mark, you could grab that and everything beneath it and drive in those kinds of records. So know that that's available. And professionals, all are one. We, it always defaults to the all, but you do have the ability to make it one. And that refers to doctors, dentists, CPAs, attorneys. Perhaps you want one primary attorney in an office, but not every attorney in an office. You could choose this option and then switch it from all to one. That means you're gonna produce fewer records and especially if you were gonna do mailings to that audience, it's gonna cost less to do that, that mail campaign. We know that a lot of people make lists uh, so that they can do mail campaigns with our information. And then I have a whole host of ways to exclude information or omit information, including previously saved searches. We saw that there are lots of ATMs across your community. If I did not want ATMs to show up in my output, I could certainly search for that. And the system will go out and identify both the SIC code and the description for ATM. I click on it, add it to my selected field down here. There it is. There's my auto, automated teller machines. I can select that. I'll never have automated teller records show up in my results if I've in fact left this in play. So know that you can do that as well. Let's do this real quick. I'm gonna leave it at verified records. I do have those unverifieds that I mentioned. And of course, close speaks for itself. You know, there could be some gold in here. I don't wanna dissuade you from, from using this universe. Just realize we've not been able to reach those businesses, but you who live in that community, you may well know that that business is still there. Maybe it's at a different address than what we had or a different phone number than what we had. In fact, I'll show you how you can tell us to update any kind of record through a communication option inside the database. So I'm gonna do a simple search. Your business might be doing business with other businesses like, let's say restaurants. I need some numbers and I know you all have plenty of restaurants. So I'm gonna, oh, not restaurants. There's my restaurants. I'm gonna search for that. Notice I'm searching all SIC codes. Think about businesses that you know of that aren't truly a restaurant, but they do have restaurant services. I'll explain that more here in a second. So let's imagine that you were looking to find restaurants because you wanted to, maybe you had some kind of cleaning solvent that you wanted to be able to sell to restaurants and it's supposed to work magic in the kitchen, right? You could obviously get a list of these restaurants. It could be those big chain restaurants or you could forego those. Just depends on what your able to sell to, right? So I've got all my restaurants there listed. Then it's just a matter of, of selecting the geography that's important to me. Let's do the city again here. And when using that city state, oh, and here I've already used San Francisco a few times. So it's sitting there for me. I'm gonna say go. No, notice I didn't put in the state. I'm gonna say go. And then the system will give me those options. So I'll set, select San Francisco. And at that point in time, I'm going to update my record count. So I have 3,700 restaurants around the city. What I wanna show you is watch what happens when I make it primary only. 
So it drops it down to 3,200. So we got rid of businesses like bowling alleys that also have a restaurant in them. Movie theaters that offer a dining experience, it's taken them out because their primary line of business has nothing to do with that of a restaurant and everything to do with something else, entertainment or bowling. So no, you can make it that granular should you need to. Let's go ahead and view these results. And I could be doing as many industries as I need. I've just done restaurants. Maybe I wanted to add in hotels or golf courses or 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 whatever. I could do that. Yes. Hi, we have a question from uh, one of the attendees. And she's wondering whether this database covers businesses which are only alive for a short period. And I think she might be referring to online retailers, but online retailers who use the Amazon platform. You know, we will not have those types of businesses. Our approach has always been about putting people in front of businesses that are in a or at a physical location over time. We wanna be able to verify them year in and year out, not a business that may be open today but close or, uh, stop going or stop being in business say six eight months later now we don't ask them when we're doing our verification phone calls by the way do you plan on closing this year but chances are for those kinds of businesses we would not have them very good question thank you i want to show you this charts option now that we're looking at just restaurants in your city so notice i no longer have the sic or NAICS code I just have the zip code, that's what it's deferred to now. So I've got those zip codes, those top seven zip codes. And then of course I can go down to that full report. This is a couple of pages in length. And I could also switch this up to employment size if I wanted to. Remember one to four was that largest universe when we were looking at your entire community. Five to nine is the largest when we're looking at restaurants at, at almost 62%. So great way to be able to look at those kinds of businesses by size. And again, I can print this off or I can make it part of a PowerPoint presentation. I also have this heat map. It's a density map. And what it will do is it will place these businesses on the map and give you this kind of view. One moment while it calculates, there it goes. So where you see the red areas, lots of restaurants in those areas, yellow, fewer, green even less, and of course, where there's no color here, there are no restaurants there. I can also print this off or make it part of a PowerPoint presentation. So know that that is available. And let's do this. Let's, you have the ability, and I'm in the, the library's version of reference solutions. So you can download. I mentioned that you could save your searches, but you can also download this information or print that out. It's 250 at a time. So 250, there are 25 records per page here. That would be a total of 10 pages to get all 250. All you need to do is put a check mark there, advance to the next page, put a check mark there, advance to the next page. You get the idea, put a check mark there. I'll keep going all the way through that 10th page. There's no seventh, yes. Uh, someone's asking, um, they saw phone numbers in the results, but um, do you have email addresses? Oh, great question. Yes, we do. And it does denote here of this 3,200, 163 with email addresses, and it says more information. It's going to direct you to contact us. We sell those. We don't make them available in the database. 
you can imagine that with all of the libraries across the United States that have access to our database, how quickly those email addresses would go sour. Since we're talking restaurants, well, I'll refer to it like milk. It would go, they would go sour very quickly. So we do sell those. You, when you contact our email address here and ask about that, someone will, the person that's responsible for that part of the, the country will contact you and find out specifically what you're interested in, what kind, how should we filter those? And then they will get you a total number of those email addresses along with the cost. By the way, this number of 163, that's what my parent company, Data Axle, owns, but we also work with a large brokerage firm that has many more email addresses. So I always let people know that whatever total you're seeing here, we have about 65% coverage. Some industries will be better than others, but on average, it's about 65%. So I'm ready to download. I'm on my 10th page. I've selected that. I can go to download here. Comma delimited is definitely what you want to use if you're going to make mailing labels. It still drops it into Excel. With the summary, it's gonna include the name of the business, their address, phone. It'll also include that owner or manager's name and title, number of employees, line of business, sales volume. All of that will be captured in that summary page. So if you were going with that, here's what that's gonna look like. And remember, I can do 250 at a time. So this is my first group of 250, but I could go out and get two or three or four more groups of 250 if I would like. With that said, my page, this page here is static. I can't add more information to this at all. However, if you take it from my universe and paste it into your own Excel document, you would be able to continue adding to that document and save it all under one name in versus saving 250 at a time under their individual names, right? You could do it all in once. You simply come up here between cell one and A and copy that information. Drop it all on yours minimize yours, come back here to mine, close it up. It will always leave you on this instructional page. You just select the word back. That'll bring you back to that 10th page. Now you need to get rid of these check marks. Easiest way to do that is revise search. The system doesn't forget how you built that. And then you view your results again. It leaves you on page one. It's taken out all those check marks. Then just type in 11 and enter, and you're ready to go with more of those downloads. So it can be pretty quick that you're able to extract those downloads. As I mentioned, of course, you can print that or you can save the entire search, this entire number. You're not gonna save just the check marks. You'll save that entire number. So we have that, I'm gonna revise this search slightly. And by the way, all of these tools are available in many of the modules that I'll show you here. I'm gonna use this map-based search tool, but before I do that, I'm gonna add some additional filters. I'm gonna say number of employees. Give me these two uh, with web addresses. In fact, I would mention that with web addresses, let's say that you wanted to do a small little email campaign. What you could do is you could produce those web addresses, download that information, then you could go and look at those websites. You'd have to do it one at a time, but you could look at that website to see if you could find an email address that you could harvest from there 
and then get enough of those so that you can do your small little email campaign. Great way to work around needing to purchase that information. So I'm going to go with a different geography selection. We're going to use the map-based search tool. And whenever employing this, make all of your other filter selections first and then open up the map. It'll give you this view of the United States and in the upper left-hand corner, this is where you begin to tell the system where in the world, or in this case, where in the United States would you like to go? You can put in a, an, a physical address here. You could put in just the city state, a zip code, a county state. Uh, Christy, what's a zip code there in, uh, like at the library there? A 94102. Could, could you repeat that again? 94102. 94102. And I'll say go. So here it's taking me to that particular zip code area. I have these tools available to me. I can draw my own shape. I could use a true radius. I have some predetermined boundaries and even create a drive route. With the shape or with the radius, the max distance that you can go out is 150 miles. So just realize there is you know, some limitation there. With draw a shape, it's quite easy. Where do you want to begin at? It's a single click to begin it. So let's say that I want to do it right here at the R with Richmond. And I want to come right up here towards 101. And I'll click again to change direction. And I'm going to come right down here. And then I'm going to come right down here to one. Almost looks like a baseball diamond. Uh, then I can simply double click to finish my shape. And then the system will go out and calculate how many businesses match my criteria in that shape. And as you can see, I'm ready to give you those 143. All you'd have to do is say done and then view your results, but we're not quite done yet. I also have this ability. Let's say that I'm looking at this shape and I'm going, you know what, I, I shouldn't have gone quite so far north. If that's the case, you can either delete this all together and redraw it, but I want to show you another way you can use this. Let's say that I'm going to start here at Richmond, and I'm going to come right over here to Oracle Park, and I'm just going to come right up here and double click. So of that 143, there are 61 that are in this new shape that I just drew. You can double click in there and exclude that if you'd want. Maybe I really meant to make this my shape and not add this area. So see how you can deduct from, and as you can see, I'm ready to give you that 85 records. So there's lots of different ways that you can use the geography to, to get to the kind of data that you need to get. I'm gonna delete this real quick with the radius. The true radius, where do you want to begin at? It's a single click, and now you have to hold it and then drag it in whatever direction you want to go. I usually go south. So there's a couple of miles right there, as you can see in that lower right-hand corner. It says radius, two point. I'll let go of that. 147 in that area. Again, just like with the draw shape, I could I could alter uh, that radius if I wanted to. Just depends on what I need to do. I also have these predetermined boundaries as large as the state or as small as the neighborhood. Let's do the zip codes in the area. So there are the zip codes in the area. I can click in any zip code that I need. They don't have to be touching and it will calculate how many businesses match the criteria that I have. If that's all I need, I can say done and I'll get those 55 records. And as I mentioned, I also have the ability to do a drive route. So when I select that, it's gonna bring up my, my new window here. At this point, I can put in 
a physical address as it notes here in these examples. I could put in just maybe a street corner, 10th and Main, somewhere USA. Depends on how I want to do it. Let's do this. I'll give you an example from, from my community here in Omaha. And we'll go to Lincoln, Nebraska, which is like 55 miles away. Notice the buffer distance. It, the max is 15 miles. That's 15 miles on, on one side of the roadway. So it's a really a total of 30. I'll do 0.2, so four blocks, two blocks south, two blocks north, and create my route. So there's my route from Omaha, downtown Omaha, all the way to downtown Lincoln. And there are 64 results along this route that match my criteria. Again, if that's all I need, I can say done, view those results, and I've got that information right there as soon as it populates. There it is. I do want to show you this, and I'll just use this Arby's as an example. Notice we have this corporate tree. So I've got that company name, that executive where we can get it, street address, city, state, zip, phone, etc. I have this up arrow that will go to the subsidiary that's responsible for all of the Arby's. If there weren't a subsidiary, it would take me to the ultimate parent. This will show me everything about that Arby's entire hierarchy. So I select, there it is. Arby's is actually owned by this work capital group out of Atlanta, Georgia. It's a private equity firm. Notice they have 42 subsidiaries, almost 40,000 branches. There's a legend that runs across the top here. So if you needed to know what this PV stood for, you can quickly identify that that's a private company. If you wanted to see these other 41 subsidiaries, because there's one of them, right? Simply collapse or close this, and there are all the other ones. And I'm sure that you recognize a lot of these businesses by name. All of these folks are under, they just added Dunkin' Donuts not too long ago. All of these businesses are in fact under this work capital group. And if you wanted to get to these, to take a look at these Hardy locations, just open up that subsidiary, click on it, and there it is. So it depends on what you need to be able to get to, but this could be some great insight whenever you see that corporate structure that you may end up using in a conversation uh, if you're attempting to perhaps sell something to that business. So know that that's available. All that can be downloaded. It can be printed off if you'd like. You can always get back to the record. And then this is a perfect example of what our records would look like. So you can click on that company name. It'll open up that record. Here's all my location information, the website that they use and social links. I can also get to that corporate information inside the record. I have those job listings through Indeed. There's the industry profile that drove in this record. I have a business profile in this case. We won't necessarily have a business profile on every single business, but where you have that, you might want to uh, explore that because you might find some great insight. I also have Google Maps embedded in here because we have the latitude and longitude embedded in the background. I have the business demographics. So we just updated this record in March of this year. So we'll contact them again next March. When we contacted them, they told us they had 23 employees at this location. What we don't ask is how many of them are full-time versus part-time. We just want that total number because that's going to go into this algorithm for this particular business to produce that sales volume. Again, this is a private company, so there won't be any financial data uh, as it relates to stock data. 
records. I can get to that work capital group record if I wanted to. This one's been in our database for about 38 years. Some hours of operation, that management directory, company news. We get this through Bing and it's, op it's updated on the fly. So uh, it's already been updated. Gosh, how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, six times today. And some of them are not good news, right? Uh, uh, but know that you can certainly take advantage of this information and even get to older articles here. Did you have a question, Christy? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, someone is asking about the map and the question is, what are carrier routes under boundary select on the map? Just that of the United States Postal Service's routes that they use. So it's a very finite, unless of course you're out here in Nebraska and the, the carrier guys, in, especially in rural Nebraska, they have some massive uh, distances that they have to travel on their route. But the people that those, those postmen that work within the confines of the city, their routes are, are, are a little uh, less in size, overall size, because they have so many more stops, right? Uh, multiple houses on one block. So uh, it's all about the postal routes. Great question. Uh, stock data, again, we don't have any on this record because it's a private company. And we wouldn't have stock data on a branch, by the way. It would only be on either the subsidiary or the ultimate parent. Then I have some business expenditures, some historical information, including historical records. And this goes back to 2003. We will track name changes. Like if Arby's became uh, another business name, we would track that name change and list it accordingly. Same thing with address information, phone number, et cetera. We also have UCC filings. So if this business is taken out a loan and put something up as collateral, that would be captured there. Nearby businesses, again, because we have that latitude and longitude in the background. And then last but not least, a list of competitors based on that SIC code. So we have all of that available in a record. I'm gonna go back to the top. I did mention early on that there's a way that you can tell us about anything that's perhaps changed with a record. Remember, we're only calling them once a year to verify this information. So lots can happen between when we made that first phone call and when we make our next one. If something has changed with this record, let's imagine for a moment, we know that the number of employees they had was 23. Let's imagine that you learned it was actually 33. You can tell us about that. Complete this information, submit it to us. We'll send you back a response immediately, letting you know that we've received your query. And as it notes here, this information is going to be sent to this group of researchers. And by the way, those people are making phone calls Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday from 8 to 5. So they're going to make that phone call based on whatever check mark you may have put next to these boxes. And then they'll call and verify that there's been a change. If when we call, they say, oh, no, we actually have 35. Well, then, of course, we're going to update the 35 and forego the 33. But we'll send you an email letting you know that we've completed that update. And that's true for any of our records, business or consumer. In fact, consumer is what I'd like to show you next. So let me go into the U.S. consumer lifestyles. So we're, we're not call verifying consumer data. As you can imagine, that's a large universe. We get it from various sources, surveys that people have completed, memberships that people have joined, warranty cards that people have submitted, uh, credit card processors that process payments for different companies. So we're capturing that. In fact, I was not in this database when I first moved back into Omaha 
but I started purchasing my dog food at Petco and I became known as a dog lover. In fact, I would go right to advanced search because here's where you can use some various filters in order to be able to drive in the kinds of information that you would like to ultimately see. So let's say that I'll go under lifestyles, I'll select this, and I do like to point out, notice there is a scoring system. It's zero through nine, but we will only show you records of people who score a six or higher. So they have to be active in their category. You can't go to Petco and buy one dog toy and then be known as a dog lover, right? So these are all of the categories, everything from apparel, fashion, and beauty, all the way down to travel that we're tracking and updating in these records. So if you were interested, maybe you, were, maybe you own a boarding kennel and you wanted to identify those dog lovers. I better take hamsters out because most boarding kennels don't want the hamsters. So let's say that you have a boarding kennel and you really wanna focus on those dog lovers. You could certainly do that. You could even choose to include some estimated home incomes. So we're getting this through the Census Bureau and then we make adjustments based on when that census was last done and what's happening. So if you wanted to, you could say, okay, only show me, because I want to I want to market to people that can afford my service or my products, right? So only show me those people that are in these, these ranges, let's say. And I would do it one per household. I want one record, one name to represent that household. It's called our head of household. So I've asked the system, identify those dog lovers, one per household in these dollar amounts, let's go. We'll go with San Fran and I'll say go. And this is my, this is my total universe. I'm gonna update my count based on that. So I have 1,055 that match my criteria that are dog lovers. I wanna show you what those records look like. And notice, we do tell you that the phone numbers that could be listed here, not as nearly as many as there used to be, landlines are kind of becoming a thing of the past. There could be cell numbers here, but we don't know if they're cell or if they're landlines. It will state though, that they may be on the do not call list and should not be used for phone solicitation. And I would add to that, unless you get a clean list. We can clean a list for you. Of course, there's a fee. The do not call registry can clean a list for you. Of course, there's a fee. Just know that to have that so you could call somebody has to go through that do not call registry. But let's take a look at Cheryl's. So here's Cheryl's record. Here's all of that address information. We haven't seen enough to make a call regarding marital status one way or the other been in this home for about 28 years. There's that neighborhood information that we're getting through the Census Bureau and then making some adjustments to that. And there are the lifestyle indicators. The only reason this record is displayed is because of the dog lovers. She's a dog lover. We didn't ask the system anything about gardening just dogs. In fact, we could do a search for gardening and her record may not come up because she's not active enough. Remember, it has to match that six to nine range. Downloading information, if you were gonna send up maybe a mailer out to these folks, same way it is on the business database. 250 at a time, you would simply select that right next to first name and then advance to your next page, repeat that. The map based search tool also works in here. So does the heat map and the charts. So let me go back to page one here. We'll chart this. So I've these are the 
home income ranges that I selected. So it breaks it down next by home value. And I can even look at this from zip code. Maybe I want to focus on, at least initially, a couple of these zip codes where I have more options available to me to do a mailing. I could get to this group of 139 or this group of 138. Just depends on what I need. So know that consumers is something that, that you would have access to as well. I do wanna show you one more tool in here. And that is in regards to this consumer snapshot section. I'll just go with age, marital status and children present. And I'll say, give me some of these age ranges. I am gonna get rid of these dollar amounts because I want more people's records available. So I'll just get rid of that altogether. Uh, I'll grab one more age range. I'll say married presence of children. So now I have 68 records because I've got rid of all those income ranges that match everything. So I can click on that. Now notice, no longer do we present to you the physical records. Because of the information selected in this consumer snapshot section, so anything from age all the way down to uh, veteran present, anything selected from there is considered sensitive data and it gets, it gets suppressed. So the closest I could get is by either using a chart, a matrix, or a table, for example. So uh, let's imagine I already, I, I, maybe I need that, that home income and I want to include age and I want to look at it based on the zip codes that they're in. That's as close as I can get now to seeing that, that information. So I've got all of these estimated household income ranges, the age ranges, the zip codes that they're in and how many records apply to each of those zip codes. So I just didn't want you to get to the point where you've made a selection from the consumer snapshot and then wonder what happened to my records? I broke something. You didn't break anything. That is the way it is set up. Questions? I think there is one question, but it was from earlier, and it has to do with the um, new movers, home homeowners. Oh yes. Someone was wondering how long does a household appear in the new movers, homeowners database? Great question. So a year, and then we'll push it out either into the U.S. Consumer Lifestyles because now we've seen that address under that new name for a year, or. If it doesn't come under here, it'll end up in the consumer, uh, the white pages. And you all don't have white pages. I just noticed that. You have the Canadian white pages, but you don't have the, at least unless I'm, I did mention that I need new glasses, but I am not seeing white pages as an option here. I so, think yeah. we did have that, access to white pages before. I don't see it either. You know, if you could double check and let me know, I can always get with the account rep and let them know, hey, we've, we're missing something here. Okay, I'll do that. You bet. So with the new movers, new homeowners, they'll be in there for one year. We update that weekly and they'll be in there for one year. Great, thank you. And just to clarify, um, you mentioned the census, uh, you, you get the census data. Um, Correct. You, the, is it updated as soon as it's available from the census? Obviously, we get it, uh, I'm sure, in, in, at, from different areas at different times, but we update it as we get it. Great, thank you. There's another question. Someone is wondering, can I update my own consumer record? Oh, absolutely. Just like with the business information, anything can be updated. Uh, All we need to do, let's just grab, let's just grab, we'll just not, not San Francisco, San Francisco. We'll grab that, we'll go grab California, and we'll say uh, apparel fashion. So yes, 
when you come into any record, let's imagine you were Christina, you can open that up and there's that data feedback button right there. So anything can be updated when you select that. Of course, it's gonna give you these various categories, name through phone number. And then if it's something that's not covered here in one of these boxes, then you can always free form a note to us. Absolutely. Other questions? I think that's it. Um, we, I think we've answered all the questions. Thank you for doing that, Bill. Um, so it's 11.07 here. Um, so if there are no other questions, I think we can uh, end the presentation. Well, thank you everyone for your time today. And if you have questions, certainly reach out to the library. You can always contact us as well. Thank you so much, Bill. It was another great presentation. I always learn something new every time I watch it. You know, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So um, we'll be sending a link to the recording along with a follow-up email later today. But again, thank you so much, Bill Carlson, yeah, and um, we'll see you next month. Okay, thank you. Would you send me an email also with the final ad count, as you know that? Definitely. Thank you. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Goodbye. Bill. Goodbye, everyone.